Hi everyone, this is hopefully the final part of this uh, power supply teardown. So what we're going to do, I'm into the front panel section as I was uh, talking before. And then we got the front panel bits and bobs here. So let's start with taking uh, these uh, things out. Nope. Always either too big or too small. Always the case. And in this case, it is too big. Let's see. All right, let's uh, see if I have anything that uh, go into these. Yep, there we are. So what we have, if the stupid camera focuses, there we are. So duodals and the rest of the stuff. So what you got here, these are like, uh, if I put this down, it will lock here. So you can see, and then you can lock it so then you won't be able to Turn the, the knobs. So, yeah, high quality. No. Same thing again. And this is for the over voltage. That's that. These little funky brackets. And we've got this, and then we have these. Now this one, I keep using that stupid screwdriver, which is broken. So this is the actual switch that turns the power supply on. Quite a beefy switch in its own right. So you can see there's like two switches stuck together. And do we have, uh, yeah, so that's weird. So I think if these are the build with built in fuse, a thermal fuse, so obviously if. Uh, uh, it gets warm or anything like that over current it will uh, it will shut itself off it's like these are the kind of uh, switch kind of fuses that uh, are used in uh, the main uh, electricity at home at the actual uh, meter point the distribution point where it's electricity is coming to the house so I believe these are those type because it does feel like uh, there's something at the back that makes it uh, flip down so yeah this must be those kind of uh, fuse and switch inside this but anyway enough of that <laughs> now we got we need to turn this up switch it's got made in England it doesn't have oh yeah arrow switches probably expensive high quality switch made in the UK 3 amp at 240 volts if it's visible there, there we got 3 amp 240 volt 
got a really nice, uh, although it's very old, it's got a very nice feel to it. Very solid switching. That's that. So we got the film cap. Oh, I don't know what I'm pointing at. So we got fill cap there, and then we got our rotary pot made by Spectro. 10k pot, and this is a wire round wire, you know, 10 turn pot, wire round round potentiometer. Now, why do these ones are not? Don't break on me now. There we go. There we go. Oh, we got this potentiometer. Uh, let's see what we got. Uh, UV camera. So we got light on uh, Servo Technic made in West Germany. Oh, you don't see that every day. 10k 0.1%. Ooh, see that kind before. Usually it's 0.25, isn't it? Uh, linearity. Let's see. Oh yeah, see? There we go. Linearity 0.25%. And this one linearity is 0.1%. I have the bloody camera. Shows properly. Uh, damn camera. There we go. Linearity 0.1%. 10K. And it is 0.1% as well. So 10k 0.1%. This one is 10k 0.5%. So these are uh, much better quality. Hmm. So these are 1% potentiometers. I've never seen something like this before. Hmm. Good stuff. Um, this one, yep, similar. Well, that one was uh, 10k. This one is, oh, uh, it says 800 oh, I believe. Oh, we've got 800 ohm, I think. Because, uh, yeah, it's 800 ohm. Same thing again, 1%. And 0.1% uh, linearity, so these must be some special uh, potentiometers. Okay, what is this? I have no idea what this is. It's kind of like a meter, but it's got some weird. Nope, we're not really managing this well. So using the tiniest little washer there. Go away.
Mm. The hell is this? Uh, no idea what this is. Let's see, some form of a, some type of a meter. Got uh, four connections at the back. It's kind of like a happy face. It's got two eyes, a nose, and a happy face. But this thing in the middle, you can see, it's kind of a. It's a meter, so. No idea what this is. Never seen a meter like this before. Uh, full scale, one milliamp. Ludlow Healy meters must be some form of a uh, measuring something. It's got volt and amp on it, so I don't know what it's used for. Then we got a relay. Nice. I think it's got 20 different screw sets and washers all around. So we got a very dirty uh, relay. You can see we've got gunks and everything everywhere and we got the uh, capacitors ERO brand is it ERD or ERO? I don't know, ERD maybe OD it's hard to uh, uh, damn camera there we go, is that ERD or is that ERO? Uh, I believe it might be D O. I don't know, but uh, yeah, and then we got this uh, relay there, so we got the footprint and the silkscreen for the capacitors on this side, but then the caps are connected on this side. There we go. That's funny. Okay, now what we got, we need to get rid of these, hopefully, nope. the meters Let's see what brand meters they are So we got, this is the amp, meet for the amp, and here, here, and this is the back, can't really read what brand it is, uh, it's a uh, I believe the person who wrote this must have been a doctor because this is a doctor's handwriting, the, the handwriting that you can never read. So, I don't know, I'm assuming it must be some form of a high quality meter. They won't use the cheap ass meters in uh, this kind of equipment. But yeah, anyway, that was the amp meter. And uh, this is the voltage meter, if we can open up, There we 
go. Ah. Yep, same brand meter again. Probably Doctors Associated or oh, Doctors Corp. <laughs> But yeah, high quality again. High quality meters. Uh, not much left. Thank God for that from this section. We just got the front panel bulbs. And just take these out. Then we have the light indicator, the, sorry, the on indicator, which is helped by this little uh, metal brackets, I believe. Yeah, that's it. Cut. You know, you want to. There we are. And that's the little neon light, high voltage light for the on power run indication. Um, and this is the front panel, easily a couple of kilos at least. It weighs. So that goes into the bin. Now what we gotta bring back to our uh, desk. It is the far. This is the control circuitry, which I'm quickly going to take apart. Go ahead and examine it off the camera. Oh man, it has to be like that, doesn't it? There's always one screw that likes to. There we go. Let's just screw around. Doesn't like to open up and doesn't like to cooperate, but we will get them. First board out. Oops. And let's do the same with these. So got the first one out. Okay. So, there's nothing left except the, the output connectors, which are not really that fun. And we got the control circuitry. So what we're going to do, we're going to put it down, and we're going to zoom into it. And now we can see. So we got our connectors. There we are. We've got our connectors coming in, then we got the... Some trimmers, trim potentiometer, capacitors, sorry, uh, power resistors, then capacitors, and some ICs. And I would have thought that they'd be using uh, discrete to make the power supply, but as you can see here, they got dedicated power supply ICs 723. Uh, usually, these are in the old power supplies, they used to use them a lot back in the days. 
So yeah, what they're doing, they're using these for the power supply. It's a basically a one chip, and all you need is this and a few other bits and bobs, and then uh, pass transistors, and uh, you got yourself a nice stable power supply. Uh, I wonder if these uh, have their own voltage reference, or they are using something else as a voltage reference. I don't see any zener here for voltage referencing. I do see I do see diodes, but I don't see any zener diodes for voltage reference. And we do have diodes over there. Let me get something over here. We do have diodes. There we go. We got diode over there. And we got another diode over there. But uh, these are for signaling. I don't think these are for. Uh, these are not the Zener diodes. And we do have again fast switching diodes and stuff. But uh, no, and this is a uh, this is not a diode. This is a precision resistor. So is that one? That's why it's indicated with an R. So we don't have any Zener diodes here for the voltage reference. Um, so it might be on the second board. I wonder what these are uh, trimming. And we do have, uh, I believe these might be op amps. Uh, SFC 741s. So yeah, these are probably the 741 op amps. Yeah, these must be the famous 741 op amps. And this is the back, and you can see how they are uh, tying the capacitors down. This is how it was back in the days. None of that elastic uh, gunk that they use these days. These should just physically tie them down. Much better. So if you want to repair this, all you're gonna do is just break this, do your repair, and then just uh, do you know maybe use a wire to just uh, tie them down again. But these days, if you want to fix the power supply, you got all that elastic, all that glue crap, which doesn't come on, you know, you can't break them easily, and it's just it's just a mess. They're just trying to make it harder and harder for us uh, to fix things. They just want you to, something breaks, look at it, oh crap, I'm just going to get a new one. That's what they want. Wasting your money. Anyway, this is the second board. We've got some uh, weird-looking... Uh, Package over here. I wonder if that's a, that's a transistor. It is a transistor, but the heatsink is weird. It's got a little screw on top. Let's see what well, it actually unscrews. Let's unscrew this and see what's inside. Wow, how weird is that? I've never seen that before. There is a transistor there. Let's clean the gunk out of it. Yeah, so we got the BX85, BFX85, and then you got this uh, weird package for the heatsink, and then you got this little thing that screws on top. How cool is that? There we go. How nice is that? Anyway, um, we do have a diode here. It looks different from all the other diodes. I wonder if this is the reference, or maybe this doesn't need a reference. Maybe these ICs have their own reference. Jeez, maybe they have their own reference. I'm not 100% sure if they needed the Zener diode or not. But there's a, Zener, there's a diode here. It does look like a Zener. It's got 15 on it. It's hard to see because the info is um, all the way at the bottom. So we have to just unsolder that to find out exactly what it is. We've got another diode over here, which is different from all the other ones. That might be a diode, the inner diode. Nope, that's a 1 and 75 2. I don't know if that's a Zener diode. Oh, we've got another one over here, actually. Same kind of th 
thing as the one at the bottom here. Same kind of packaging, then we go over there. And it's next to the transistor. So I wonder if that is the voltage reference. None of these uh, taps are marked, so I wouldn't know what's what. So yeah, you can see, look. We got the mod number, and then we got all of this numbering over here. So number seven is left out. So is, is that how they distinguish what mod this is? So mod seven. Is that what it means? Or why wouldn't you have all the numbers and then just circle around the number? But then again, circling with uh, with any uh, marker might come off. So this way, at least you know that this is Mark 7. Model Mark 7. No idea. Oh no. This one is odd 7. The M is missing. That's weird. Odd, then we got cross on number one. So is that how they... Uh... I have no idea. Someone must have been drunk when they were making this, but they... <laughs> you can see how they used to make PCB back in the days. Look at this. <laughs> little shape over here, then we got, then we got a little funky shape over there. And you can see how funky the whole PCB design is. But yeah, no doubt this power supply was very expensive when it first came out. But yeah, all it took is these two little tiny boards to control that giant beast of a power supply that I just took apart in four videos. Yep, this must be the, the biggest uh, video that I've done, the longest, broken into four parts. But the only reason is because the whole thing was too heavy and uh, taking it apart wasn't easy. But anyway, yeah, this what was inside the power supply. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I haven't seen anyone taking this kind of power supply apart on the YouTube. So hopefully it might come handy to someone who want to see what's inside it before you purchase it or anything else. But uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to turn it on because I have no use for something this big. It's just, it's huge. I mean, it's very heavy. It's very big, and uh, I don't need that kind of voltages. So that's why I just took it apart. I got four of them, so I got three more to take apart, which uh, should uh, take a while. But anyway, hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, teardown of uh, Thorn uh, power supply. Big ass power supply. Huge power supply. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and. Uh, if you have any question, leave it in the comments. And yeah, if you like the video, like always, please give a thumbs up. And until next video, goodbye.